So Anno 1800 is without a doubt one of the best resource management city builder-esque games on the market right now. Undoubtedly, it was the best Anno game in the franchise and boosted the series into the public spotlight to millions of players around the world and is still being discovered by new players to this day over four years after release. However, many people come to the game looking for a true city building experience like City Skylines or SimCity. Except for SimCity 5, we don't talk about that. Unfortunately, that is where Anno comes up a little short in my opinion. The city building aspect of the game is really just a thin veneer with limited assets and customization. This is a game that is focused on resource and space management first and foremost. Basically, it's just a really pretty Excel spreadsheet. But thanks to mods and the recently added creative mode system, we can turn Anno into something far more than what is offered by the developers and create our own 19th century city builder to create some beautiful, beautiful cities. So let's take a look at how we want to achieve this. First, there's obviously the things available from Ubisoft, the numerous cosmetic packs, as well as the various DLCs or season passes. All of these come with a huge variety of new buildings, skins for existing buildings, and lots of new ornaments. They really add a lot to the game and give us hundreds of new options to play around with designing and decorating our cities. Of course, if you're looking to just create a really pretty city, the creative mode added with the anniversary update in April 2023 is the ideal setting for this. It removes all of the management aspects of the game, and it lets you just build everything in a free build mode. Uh, with no constraints or having to worry about managing needs and production chains, you can spend time to let your imagination just run wild and build whatever you want. So whenever you're ready to do this, you just click on new game and then click on the creative mode and you can change in the settings you want and go from there. And you don't have to worry about managing any of the city's aspects and just start building. Now let's take a look at mods. With the recent integration of a mod manager into Anno 1800, mods are easier than ever to install and use. I am going to separate this into buildings first and ornamental mods second, and then any additional mods that you might need or want. A full list of these mods, as well as links to download them, are going to be available on my Discord server. I know some people don't like having to use Discord for stuff, but it does make it a lot easier for me to keep the list updated over time, and it provides a really good place to ask questions about them. A list of the mods will be in the description, but I'm not going to provide links to every single thing down there because some stuff is, you know, has little caveats to how you need to download them and stuff, and so that just why that's why it makes Discord a better place to keep track of all of that. So, with that out of the way, let's jump into the mods I recommend and get started. Now the first mod I have is actually a collection of mods. I was going to show this all off in game, but there's so much to it, it's easier just to go through the screenshots. This is a collection by Jacob. Jacob makes some absolutely phenomenal content for Anno 1800. It is breathtaking, it is beautiful, and it is really, really cool. So we're just gonna scroll through some of these screenshots and show off what he has available for you in the collection. We have Artista Skyscrapers. We have Terraced Worker and artisan homes so we can make some really cool london-esque worker districts and stuff it's really really awesome we have diagonal residences look how cool this looks guys it's so awesome uh tea factories and tea docks so we can have that true british feel to us over here upgradable workers for artisans. Uh, we have small hotels. These are so well done. They are absolutely gorgeous little hotels. I would actually have tourists in my city with these. I would actually be okay with having tourists. Uh, we have better electric wires. Still not a fan of electric wires, but these at least look better than what we have in the base game. Uh, different types of streets and improved streets, tool factories from extra goods. Uh, this is using a modified version of the goldsmith and the jeweler, I believe. And these are actually modular. As you can, as you add more factories next to each other, they will connect and make these huge complexes. Really, really cool. New versions of town halls. 
and simpler things like a music school and a Docklands gate module. This is something that I think that Ubisoft should have done by default in the game. This allows a gate module for Docklands so you can have your roads going through Docklands and have stuff sitting outside Docklands such as you can see in this picture. This is stuff I think should have been available by default with the Docklands DLC and so many new models and textures and different things you can build around your cities. It really helps the skyline and gives you some alternatives to your city that you can build with while still having the same factories as before, but they are just going to look different and really change the look of your cities. One other collection I want to showcase just through pictures and everything is called More Old World Variety. This one adds in just so much stuff, it's unbelievable. It adds in different types of buildings, lots and lots of ornaments. It has so much stuff to it, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, scooter parking, a castle. Uh, the castle at night and there's all the new a lot of the new ornaments it adds uh different types of industrial ornaments topiaries people rocks whatever this chassis stuff is at the top i haven't really looked through it all but it's absolutely phenomenal the amount of stuff that it adds oh that's a car workshop apparently apparently it will add in a car workshop some cranes scaffolds cannery silos car accidents with some animations on them, train workshops. So many cool things that this mod right here adds that will just add so much variety and spice to your city building. So yet another one that I highly recommend getting because it adds so many little things that you can use to detail out your cities. All right, now let's get into some of the actual building mods. So the first one we have right here is the Old World Chapel. This is available in the farmer tier of the game and it is by Lion053. Just a very nice small 3x3 three three chapel for your little farming communities. Next up we have three different models for the church at the worker tier. First we have Gasparov's church, then we have the Jorgensen's church, and then we have the New World Cathedral. Now the New World Cathedral model is also available in the New World as a special building down there. Beautiful assets, beautiful models for the church. It can get a little funky sometimes and you might have to keep placing it down to get the right model. Shift V doesn't always work, but if you can't get it, just keep placing down the church and eventually you will get it. Now, all three of these have been created by JJE1000. You're going to notice a theme right away with my building models and stuff. A lot of them are by JJE. He makes some absolutely gorgeous assets for this game. Next up, JJE has also brought us a variation on the bank. Now, this is the same model. It just has two different textures. Uh, it just changes the copula and stuff on top from copper to green. You can have either one. So this is a variation on the bank skin. Just place your bank, hit shift V, and you can get one of these additional models right here. So again, another model by JJE. Absolutely fantastic. Now this next building right here, I do have to show a screenshot of because I can't get it unlocked in the game. Uh, hopefully by the time this video gets out, I'll have instructions down in the comments about how to get this building unlocked automatically in creative mode. So where you don't need to have met the uh, population requirements. So be on the lookout for that down in the comments. There's three buildings in this list that are like that. They're all by JJE and I'm going to be hitting him up here very soon about how to remove that unlock trigger so we can have these buildable automatically right from the start in creative mode. So this is called a bourse or probably butchering the pronunciation. It is a stock exchange building. Really, really nice looking corner building. I love me some good corner buildings in the game. So I'm really, really loving this one. The second one in our list of things that I've got to work with JJ on uh, is a National Civic Hall. Very, very cool looking uh, Greco-Roman type building right here. Uh, I think it would really be really neat uh, to think of this as some sort of giant museum or something. It really reminds me of the Parthenon in Athens. Very, very pretty building right here. Uh, you could use it as maybe some sort of auditorium, concert hall, opera, something like that in your cities. Very, very nice model right there. And the last building I got to show off on a screenshot is the 
uh, Central Hall. This is actually a giant train station. Uh, you can see in the back that he's using some of the uh, railway ornaments that came with one of the cosmetic packs for the game to create some, uh, I don't even know what you call them, platform covers. And I believe it also comes with some back here as well. It's a really, really neat looking building to create a central train station for your cities. All right, next up, we have a gymnasium building. This acts as a school, and it is just a really cool looking giant building. There's actually a school that kind of looks like this in a city nearby to me. So it's really neat uh, to have this really ornate school building that we can have in our cities to provide some higher class education other than the tiny little school building that we get in the worker tier. Next up, we have the Municipal Hall. Again, another building by JJE. This one right here uh, can be like a Metropolitan Center or something like that, or an Opera Center, or like similar to the National Civic Center, or something like that. It's just a really cool looking building. Very, very pretty model right here. So go check that one out. Next up, we have the Variety Theater Variation Building by Mr. Koki. I believe that's how you say his name. Uh, this just adds a wall-to-wall -wall variation for the Variety Theater. I always thought something like this was really needed for, especially for engineers and stuff, because having just that separate Variety Theater building just felt a little out of place for some reason to me. This is the same size as the Variety Theater. It's just a skin variation for it, but it will look really good alongside your wall-to-wall -wall engineer buildings. And it also would look really good amongst your artisans, of course, to add a bit of high higher class building in there. Now, this one is not special. It's not unique or fancy or anything. It is just an oil pier. This is actually from Spice It Up. All this does is add an oil pier. This is just for some variation in your harbor because the harbors can kind of look a little same after a while. So this just adds some interesting variation into your harbors and stuff with a different pier that you can add on. And last but not least, we have the White City Palace expansion by JJE as well. I'm going to show some pictures of this because it's just, I, I just, I'm amazed at what he has done with this. This turns the modules for the palace and instead of, I, instead of the default number of like, what is it, like nine or something, there's 54. There are 54 skin variations for the different modules and you can create some absolutely stunning palace configurations we have a bunch of pictures right here in different lighting but as you can see we can start making some really amazing looking palaces he has done an awesome job with this right here to add some flavor and variety to our palaces the palace was always one of those buildings that i felt needed some love and some help because it always looked kind of boring to me and now you can make your palace look absolutely awesome or as small as you want to from this screenshot right here. But it is really, really cool. This is also a palace museum piece. Uh, you can add on a palace museum and add artifacts onto it. So it's a whole other main building. So, so cool. It is just so awesome how this right here works. So the White Palace City, uh, White city palace expansion is by jje and it is a must-have for me going forward in my future playthroughs all right so we're done with the buildings let's move on to some of the ornamental and road related type stuff so the first we're going to take a look at is called the Inbessa streets for old and new world this adds the stone streets from Inbessa into the old and new world and let me tell you they fit so, so perfect, especially in the new world. Uh, they also look really good alongside your standard worker and farmer buildings. Amazingly enough, they work really, really well with that. This is by Lion035. It's a great little mod, um, adds a lot of variety to your roads and stuff in those two regions. So definitely check this one out. JJE coming in yet again with another amazing mod. This is Mediterranean foliage and street trees. This just adds hundreds of different types of tree variations in lots of different settings that you can add to create some really cool foliage around your cities. Lots of vegetation variations and stuff uh, to make some really nice parks, tree-lined streets, and just about anything else you can possibly think of in your cities. 
Next up, we have Industrial Ornaments by Herterter1. Love that name for some reason. Uh, Industrial Ornaments adds in over 250 different industrial themed ornaments for your cities. Chimneys, smokestacks, whatever these barrel things are, these uh, silo type things. That's what they're called, not barrels, silos, silos, all kinds of stuff. He basically took all the models for the game and just stripped them apart and made all sorts of individual little things that you can add in to your cities for decoration and everything. It's absolutely phenomenal. So many great ornaments that he has added in. So go check that one out. Now, the next three mods are by everyone's longtime favorite mod author known as After Dark, a.k.a. Muggen Sturmer. Probably butchered your name. I'm sorry, Muggen. I'm so sorry. I know I butchered your name. I do it every time. But After Dark created the um, longtime favorites for many people, City Ornaments and Harbor Ornaments. Now, those mods have been discontinued for the time being, and he has created a whole new system for his mods and everything. So we have the... So first of all, we have the pavements mod. This adds in all sorts of new pavement tiles and all sorts of new things for your harbors. Different types of uh, keys and piers and different things like that. Bridges that can go across the water. Lots of really cool options right there. Even stuff for the Arctic, which never gets any love when it comes to content for mod authors, but added in lots of new piers and stuff for up in the Arctic, as well as Mbessa. So lots of cool stuff right here and this is the pavements mod next up we have the streets related content uh, this really what's called streets related it's the mods name uh adds in lots of stuff for anything related to streets basically uh we even we get true roundabouts right now now this is actually something that just plops over a just your normal four x four you draw out your little four x four road this plops in the middle and has a round part that covers up the other parts of it. It's really, really cool how it works and everything. I think, yeah, here we go. You can see right there. We, we lay out the normal and then you can plop something over top of it like that and create a little roundabout. It's really, really awesome. Absolutely blew my mind when I first saw this. It's going to make, and they actually follow the little round and everything. It's so cool. So definitely going to be using that pretty soon. Uh, lots of street related stuff, all kinds of roundabouts that we, we can see this, whatever this thing right here is over the streets. I, I don't know, but it's cool looking. We even have a little pagoda looking thing, some stuff for the Mbessa people. Bridges for trains, like, oh my God, we have train bridges finally. So awesome. So many cool things that we can add in that are related to streets and everything for the cities. So again, an amazing mod by After Dark. And last but not least, we have Green Mile. This includes all trees and plants from city and harbor ornaments uh, made into its own mod and just has even more options for even more foliage for your cities. It's really, really cool. So many great things to add in, more variation to our city's skylines and change up how everything looks. Now, the last two things I want to talk about are not really mods or assets of themselves. What they what they are are shared content. Uh, After Dark has created basically a pool resource where a lot of objects that are shared between his mods are located so you don't have to have lots of different mods you have this one and then the other mods kind of pull from that basically it's kind of how it works in in a nutshell uh what it is called is shared objects in mu and then a modified ornaments tab what this does is actually adds a new tab to the ornaments uh section called mods and harbor and that's where anything related to your to the mods that After Dark makes are located in there. And it also seems to pull stuff from other mods in there, too. I don't really know how that works. It's it's kind of magic to me, but it does pull some stuff into there. But these two things right here are required whenever you are using any of After Dark's mods. Those are the Green Mile the street related and the uh, plaza stuff right there. So those three mods from After Dark, you do need the modified ornaments tab and shared objects. All instructions for how to install and download that stuff are on their Nexus pages. It's really, really easy. Don't worry. It's super simple.
While finishing up the video, I remembered there is one mod I forgot to talk about because for some reason it skipped my mind. This is by Lionel. Oh, Lionel. This is by Lion053, and it is called Safari to Mbessa. This adds an amazing plethora of ornaments and new buildings to Mbessa to build these absolutely stunning, stunning Mbessan cities. I, it's just, I have no words. All I'm going to do is just let you look at these pictures. So this mod right here is a must have for beauty builders. It is absolutely amazing. So many additions to the game, so many cool things that are added for Mbessa to create some really spectacular cities because unfortunately Mbessa is one of those regions that is really lacking in variety and detail. And this absolutely changes that and makes the region someplace that I want to go to and I want to build some amazing new cities in. So with that, guys, I hope these mods gave you some ideas and some inspiration of things you could download to add to your games to play in either creative mode or in a regular game of Anno. You don't have to play in creative mode to use these, obviously. You can use those in your regular game if you still enjoy the resource management part of the game. But if you're just looking to build a really cool city and let your imagination run wild and not have to worry about the tediousness of making products and shipping them around and supplying goods and stuff to your people, use that creative mode, use these mods. Let me see what you're building. Show me on Discord. I'd love to see your cities. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and a comment down below. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, it helps me out tremendously. I will see you in the next one. Take care.